From the Library of Maria Menounos, this is Book Circle Online, featuring in-depth discussion, insight, news, and commentary on all the world's leading book titles and their authors. And now, Book Circle Online. Hey everybody, it's Book Circle Online. I'm your host, Jeffrey Masters, and joining us today is Pamela Ribbon. Pamela's new book, Notes to Boys, re-examines her childhood through the many notes and letters she wrote as a teenager, and she's here today to talk with us. Hi. Hi, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, the book was fun. Thank it was you. wild. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you said childhood at first, and I was like, that's a little misleading, because I'm much older than... <laughs> it's not, I'm not very small in the book. Uh, flush. <laughs> yeah, it's not appropriate for the under 12. What was it, like 13, 14, 15? Yeah, I think the first story starts at 13 and goes to okay. right around my freshman year of college. Okay, I consider that childhood. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely a coming of age. Right. Yes. Um, now, before we start, I just want to let everyone know at home that the letters you're writing, it was not like a one-time thing. Right. This was like a massive recurring part of your life yes one was 200 pages <laughs> more than one <laughs> should I look less shocked <laughs> no well I didn't realize how shocking it was until other people would you see so you're oh, doing really? it like you're doing the head tilt and the polite nod you know as if I was practicing that in the mirror <laughs> I've learned that people so 200 pages to one person who was 14 and did not understand yeah <laughs> yeah why you would do something like that I thought, um, I, I read a lot, and I thought the way to a boy's heart was through, you know, words straight from my soul. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what what sparked the idea, though, to like, how did you come up with this, like, idea to start writing the letters? Do you remember, like, what the, like, spark was? Well, I, um, well, I moved a lot as a kid, and so my mom always told me to write my, write stories to, you know, keep myself entertained. Yeah. So I used to write short stories when I was little. And then, I don't know, I guess keeping it all to myself just didn't seem right. <laughs> like I have to share with the audience. You know, there wasn't, there were no blogs. There was no way. Right. To, I couldn't tumble my way to <laughs> uh, some boy's heart. So, yeah, I wrote to these boys. I, I really liked romantic comedies and felt like I could, my life was going to be a John Hughes movie as soon as I wrote myself into it. Right. right. <laughs> And I loved you loved the Albert Brooks movie, and you mm -hmm. thought you were going to be Albert Brooks. Right, I'm I'm Albert Brooks, and I this boy I loved was the Holly Hunter of right. of my broadcast news life. <laughs> we'll talk about gender identity issues later. This is literally <laughs> the closest I've ever been to being in broadcast news right now. Okay, well, perfect. <laughs> it's Welcome. Here, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I thought one of the also the wild parts of the book was that you weren't just writing the letters; you were like giving them to people. Right. What were some of their responses? Silence was common. No response. No response happened a lot. Well, I mean, only now can I think what. So we didn't say. So I, I have all the first drafts of these letters that I kept as if, I guess, a diary of my love. Right. You know, how, that's how that's how writers do it. Right. <laughs> so how will they publish after I die? That's what I did. I beat it before I died. I published them now. I see now why people wait until after they're dead to publish oh, their no. love letters. But no, so I thought, I thought, um, yeah, I thought I would give these boys these letters and that they would see how much they meant to me. I was pretty shy to say these kinds of things in person, and I also really liked shyish boys. So we weren't going to have this kind of conversation. Oh, I see. These were grown-up feelings I was having. They were. Right. Yeah. Too grown-up for 14-year-old boys. Yeah. And really too grown-up. For me, I when you read the book, you will know I clearly don't understand how sex works, and I don't, yeah. I don't understand uh, boundaries and things that yeah. that come with adult relationships. It was almost like you were like reading Shakespeare in school, being like, "Oh, that's how a writer is supposed to write." Mm -hmm. Well, I will do that then. Yes, yeah. oh, I wish that they were <laughs> Shakespearean. They are um, really, they are really. You can tell that Stephen King was an influence yeah. in my life. <laughs> and you can pick out lots of influences. Paula Danziger, Judy Bloom. <laughs> It was somewhere between, uh, somewhere between an adult Judy Bloom and endless love, right? Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been on the back. <laughs> That's right. For those of you who felt endless love wasn't intense enough, right? <laughs> Which little Pam clearly did not. Yeah, no, little Pam needed all, all of her heart out there. I guess I felt like if I didn't tell the whole thing, and obviously it's it's heightened. I'm imagining these relationships that we're not quite in. Some of these boys sometimes never really spoke to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or I had to class with them, which yeah. is not the same thing, that we did not hold hands. But I was picturing a future. And not 
really. You know, I also know I'm 15. But right. so this is my elaborate way of saying, why don't we go see a movie together? <laughs> <laughs> forever <laughs> yeah and almost in too that it was like letter a collection of letters from like nine different girls of all like ages and like varying maturity levels mm -hmm. it just like this like major span yeah that's what's interesting is you can watch me learn from my own mistakes as the letters go on and sometimes i'm being a little more coy and then sometimes i'm like oh boys like when you talk about boobs <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> boys like it when you curse and so they i moved into different levels you could tell when I was a little a, a new approach with a boy like this guy likes it aloof right so then that's the one where I'm like I don't even want men <laughs> men but I don't even want to be in a relationship anymore I want to be in a relationship with you you know it's like all it's all in there you can see me testing out all these relationships that I didn't that's, quite have a, both sides of yeah that's very intuitive though I guess I <laughs> you have to I mean some people dated a lot in high school. I dated a lot in my head in high school and on the page. Okay. <laughs> I guess it's less. You can't get pregnant that way. <laughs> you know, you're married now. It's a happy ending. Right. Kids, don't feel bad. <laughs> right. No, it all works out eventually. Right. The, I'm 87 uh, years old. <laughs> but you look great for 87. I really do. I really do. It's because I never went outside. Oh, perfect. It's the best, best wig I've seen all day. Thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> the little Pam writing letters was like very passionate and intense. Mm -hmm. You said you were shy though. So did that not cross over into the, your like real life? I was pretty shy until uh, I got into theater around 10th, 10th grade, 11th grade, something like that. Okay. But I was pretty shy before then. Uh, so yes. Yeah, so there were boys that just probably, they just had no, no idea. No, no, they couldn't because yeah. I would not have said it to them. So, <laughs> like, there's the story about the boy who touched me really high on a thigh, so I had to go home and write a poem about him. Right. Because <laughs> it was raining and we were on a bus. Uh, he did not know when I, I said nothing to him on the bus. He put his hand up my skirt and then I went home and wrote about it. He <laughs> never heard a word or thought about it again, probably. No, he probably didn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So what made you finally realize, we we're talking earlier about that this wasn't like the norm? Like, um, was that a big revelation when you figured that out? Well, we, you know, you would write notes to girls too. Girls wrote notes to each other all the time. Oh, and really? you, I guess, you know, you every once in a while would get a note back from a boy, but it was usually like, hey, I, <laughs> I have soccer practice after school. My mom's making dinner. <laughs> right back soon, okay. Right? <laughs> it was just very factual. Right. And, uh, so I guess I just thought I was, maybe I thought I was good at it. Okay. Right? Because why else would I keep doing it? There had to have been some encouragement either. Well, maybe because they read them or maybe because they would say thanks for the note or something or I don't know. You'd think you would stop if there wasn't something coming back. Yeah. So maybe and not these... to like pass judgment. It was kind of like amazing that like little Pam kept doing this. <laughs> <laughs> she was very persistent. Well, I didn't have anything else going on. <laughs> For one. You moved a lot. It's okay. I, I moved a lot. And then once I was in theater, I was very busy. I had rehearsal. But before then, uh, I had this time to write. I guess I thought writing, I didn't really want to write poems to myself. And I finished all my homework and I'd read all the books I was, you know, I, I don't know. I had yeah. some free time. <laughs> Okay. There was, I, I mean, there's a lot of content too. Yes. Was there a lot to like sift through? Yes. And that's not all of it in the book by in any means. <laughs> there's just so many. There are some that are just not appropriate. And in fact, now that the book is out, some of these boys have contacted me with oh, really? letters that I never kept a first copy of. Oh, that they saved. It's way more. Yes. I that's mean, amazing. That is what I learned is some of them, they really did save. Both 200 page letters were saved. Wow. But I couldn't have known that at the time. You know, they didn't tell me that. And, no. But, but... Um, and the friend that sent you the 200-page letter, was that just, like, fortuitous to, like, the book? No, I, I, had, I had started writing the book and jokingly was like, ha, 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 remember that 200-page letter? And he said, of course, I have it still. You know, it's at my mom's house. Wow. So... Yeah, maybe even when I thought I was a, making a fool of myself, and I certainly was. I don't want to <laughs> negate it in any way. It, it's nice to know that on the other side, it meant something Absolutely. to them, even if they couldn't really process what it was at the time. It made them feel special. Yeah, and yeah. a keep after all that time. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, I have them all. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, yeah, I mean, they were real 
I, I, I do joke and say some of these people didn't know me, but there were a few that were real relationships. They were real boyfriends, even if yeah. it wasn't super consummated or whatever but they were first loves and they were first feelings and they were honest feelings and maybe he didn't know how to write back sometimes I feel weird when you're around too right but um but how special you must feel to get a 35 page letter about yeah <laughs> about what if you and I went on a picnic <laughs> <laughs> I remember a friend got one in college and she was like it's three pages and I was like oh my god three pages like mind blown yeah but you um are kept in touch with a couple of these guys and asked them like what they thought mm -hmm. and they had said that they didn't ever think about trying to define the relationship right did that surprise you at all I guess maybe I, because I was constantly trying to define it on the page right. for them <laughs> but also I think there was a feeling in all of them which is we're we're friends here and if we move this into something else what if we're not friends anymore and we were you know we were all all of them were true friendships that, of course I mean not not the ones where I'm like boy whose name I don't actually know but but the few that strong relationships that I talk and uh, talk about throughout the book I see you know on the other side it would have made things weird and some of them they did become boyfriends and we had really good relationships that yeah. ran their course but do you think that's like the main difference in how you experienced like early sexuality versus the way these boys did was just like trying to define it um well, I don't know. <laughs> <That's a weird laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I try not to think about what they thought about when they thought about that. Um, hmm. I don't know. I think I probably was exposed to a lot of grown-up things pretty young. Right? Okay. We had we had cable from like day one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so I had seen I had seen you know adult behavior from you know a pre ten year old set. Yeah. I, I think probably and we were in a small town and I wasn't from that small town so I think. Sometimes I was definitely pushing for or mm, talking about a relationship that they were not even starting to think of yet. Right. And not that I was trying to have sex with any of these boys, really, <laughs> despite what some of their moms may have thought. <laughs> I was too scared. Right. I was too scared of that. I really just wanted all the I wanted all the passion. Yeah. But I think that um, now, now in this. Uh, Eleanor and Park sort of <laughs> life that we live in. Yeah. It seems like teenagers now are like, yes, give me all the passion. But let me tell you, in the 90s, that was not happening. Right. No, boys were aloof. You saw Footloose. If they had passion, <laughs> it was in dance. Right. <laughs> I know was, you're joking. Everybody was but... <laughs> very, you know, knicky and whatever. Like, right. It was, you know, boys were, you know, they were quiet skateboarder types. I don't think they are anymore, are they? Are boys still quiet? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, well, and I think that like social media and technology kind of like ruins that. Well, it forces your voice in some way, some sort of outward declaration of yourself. Yeah. You know, I, I said somewhere, I don't know if it's in this book or not, but like when I was growing up, you, you defined yourself through your t-shirt and your mixtape. <laughs> they were both not your voice. You would hand someone the songs that meant something to you and you would wear your philosophy yeah. across your chest or by whatever <laughs> band you liked or... Spencer's gift sale. Oh, I love that. <laughs> but now, yeah, you're right. With social media, you have to. You, I mean, I guess even with Instagram, you're doing a, a photojournalism of yeah your selfness, right? Yeah, out there. of course. I wonder if that's healthier. I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine you being like, "I wrote you this letter. You've not texted me back. You posted this Instagram picture. You have your phone." Oh man, that's true. I could have stalked. Which I had a phone curfew. It's it was very. Well, I mean, I broke it a lot, but I wasn't supposed to be on the phone after nine, and you couldn't see these boys. I didn't have a car. There was no like webcam. Yeah. We couldn't stare. We had, we called each other and watched the same things on television. That was. <laughs> that what was were, a date. What were you watching at the time? Oh gosh. Oh. Hmm. I wonder what it is back then. You're making me have to remember. Oh, I was watching a lot of 21 Jump Street. Oh, okay. <laughs> that actually, it's a pretty easy answer. It's <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> I was taping episodes of 21 Jump Street and watching them. Oh, how funny. Mm -hmm. And 120 minutes on MTV. I watched that. Too. Oh, I don't even know what that is. No, I know. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's kind of amazing, though. I'm like... 87 years old. <laughs> oh, yeah, we covered that. I forgot. <laughs> It used to be called music television. It's okay. I forgive you. <laughs> you can look it up on Wikipedia. Oh, I've heard of that. <laughs> See? <laughs> That's my favorite book. You're very... <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you have such a like, profound documentation of your life. 
I think that like a lot of people don't have. Right. Did that, um, I just think about my like youth and I don't have such a clear image. It's just kind of like a singular experience that happened. Mm-hmm. Childhood, teenage years. Like how did, do you think having these letters like change your remembrance? Is that a word? No, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then I went right into blogging before there was a blog. But so there's online a collection of all the letters that I wow. sent to the world starting in 1998. So I guess wow. I never really stopped if you if you think about yeah. it that way um i know a lot of times i uh as a writer you just don't really know how you felt about what just happened until you write it down and yeah. see what you and have you how long have you been like reading and like reprocessing these letters i know you were performing them some of them live right mm-hmm. so yeah, how I think long i has started that i started putting them on on my site pammy.com in gosh i don't know 2010 that sounds about right oh. 2010 2011 yeah, so somewhere around there. recently. Yeah, I had had them, but I'd kept them. I think my mom moved or something, so more of them came to my house. Okay. And more than I knew I had, <laughs> or I moved something. There, you know, the thing where you open up a box and you're like, oh, this. Yeah. And uh, and I had done earlier ones uh, at a comedy show in 2004, so that was the first time I started looking at them. But I put them on a shelf after that. Um, so I don't know. I guess the older I got, the more I was able to see how that person, that young version of me, set me up for a lot of heartbreak in my 20s because I had these expectations where I just felt like, well, they're young high school boys. I can't, I won't be fulfilled by the, now that I'm a woman in college, <laughs> now that yeah. I've entered my 20s, yeah. here come the gentlemen callers. And so, uh, you know, I still made some mistakes about what, about boundaries and how much of yourself to give someone right away yeah yeah the trick with my <laughs> the trick with my now husband was i i just castanza him i just stuck with the opposite of all my instincts oh really <laughs> yeah. no mixtapes like i i will not make him a playlist i will not write him a letter no graphic tees no no t-shirts in fact no and he didn't worked? even see a shirt with a statement on it for about two years well it worked but that's except li- he had that lying. S- it's yeah. lying. He had that slow realization after about a year where he was like, what? Like, then he saw these letters and starting to realize, like, you feel a lot more than you tell me you feel. I was like, <laughs> yes, it's been a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but by then, you know, he was hooked. So uh, and that was 77 years ago. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it worked uh, out. It worked out. But, uh, I, well, it's not exactly, it's not exactly lying <laughs> if... <laughs> <laughs> hiding <laughs> what should we call it <laughs> some people call it growth <laughs> right oh, how positive of you well I like you know sometimes you meet people after you read these things out loud and they throw words around like brave right when you learn that this isn't what most people would do and so they're, so they're very brave of you to be able to turn this into something funny and I'm like well what, what would you do and they're like never speak of it again pretend it never happened ignore it shove it down shove it away negate it <laughs> And maybe that is the healthier way to go about it. But then, you know, how can you be a writer? <laughs> right. Yeah. And I was surprised. This is your first nonfiction book, right? This is. Yes. This is the first time it's got the name nonfiction. Like memoir. I'm not hiding behind any. Well, it's just a story. Is that a scary name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> memoir. It's a little scarier because, yeah, you're saying, this is me. <laughs> so was it harder to write than your other books? Um, I don't know if it was harder to write because I had... Well, I guess you know where the story begins and ends, and you definitely know exactly how you feel, where sometimes oh, yeah. with characters, you don't know exactly where they're going to take you in the story, and um, you're placing yourself in a position that you've never been before, and you have to feel what that must feel like. Yeah. This time, I guess, well, to say, to answer your question earlier of looking back, I had to wrestle with how it feels now and how it really must have felt then. You know, your world's so small your concept of infinity and you know graduation is and a date that's never coming when you're 15 like every day is three years long so every little thing that happens is a huge drama it's a whole season of that (laughs) of that series you know (laughs) in a day and you have a lot of feelings about it so trying to tap into that much feeling was probably the hardest part of the book because it would bring up things that I had kind of shoved down and thought I had dealt with and thought, oh, I'm over that and now that's kind of funny. But when you put yourself back in that day and remember how it felt to have that happen to you, to have, you know, boys break into your house. Yeah. Or, or That was scary. It was scary. It was really scary. I mean, you know, holding a knife and having someone say to you, like, well, you, you can't do anything. 
you can't do anything you are nothing and you know you can think about it when then when you think about it as you're grown up and instead of thinking there's two thoughts now I think of how I felt then but now I now I can realize how my parents felt when they came home and learned that this had happened like that that helpless feeling of what is happening in my house when I'm at work yeah yeah I mean the latchkey kid situation that we were in back then where you really had hours and hours unsupervised and this could happen and it wasn't a big deal it was not a big deal nothing oh, happened really? out of it nobody got in trouble nobody Weird. nobody got in well i got in trouble right <laughs> my parents found out right but these kids didn't get in any kind of trouble they're not even kids really like they were you know 17 18 wow breaking in through a window and you know weird yeah and it was also weird reading about how racist the town was mm -hmm. because e even though you're like give or take 87 like it wasn't that long ago <laughs> that's right it you wasn't know that long ago. and i'm like no no that shouldn't still be like something people can write about right well i mean they could still write about it now you think to that extent to say like slavery wasn't that bad i think really it depends on where you are yeah oh man i mean I, you would hope not yeah of course i mean maybe i'm like more have you ever looked at the comment section of cnn oh my <laughs> on like any given day are terrifying yeah any article ever it's just only bashing or or your own facebook feed sometimes <laughs> of people that you yeah aren't maybe as close with anymore i mean i it's still pretty rough out there interesting yeah i mean you hope Maybe you've surrounded yourself in a situation where, you know, we're yeah. all, <laughs> but it's not really, it's not really true. Yeah. Yeah. I thought also, I really love the chat. I don't love it, but um, um, sorry, the chapter where you and like Kay ended your friendship. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so like interesting and like emotional just because nobody like writes about like friend breakups. Yeah. You no, know, there's no like friendship fairy tale and like how to like end and begin. Right. Well, that was sad. That's something I something I actually do try to write about a bit because that I didn't have a lot of female friends um, until my later twenties, and so I, much like all the mistakes I made with the boys in high school, I started making them with female friends as I was older because I didn't really, as you can see, know how to navigate all those female friendships. I messed up pretty early on in like freshman year, sophomore year, and then just assumed, oh, I must be better at making friends with boys. But so I you, like, just stopped trying. I just didn't. I, 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 you know, I don't, it wasn't even that I wasn't trying. I guess I didn't, maybe I didn't invest as much emotionally. And maybe because I couldn't see what, because I had such a romantic notion of relationships, I didn't see where a female friendship could be that rich and rewarding. I mean, it's naive and it's yeah. a, a young way of looking at it. I don't feel that way now, but I didn't learn that until I had. Female friends who got me through a divorce, female friends that I made in roller derby, female friends that I made, you know, in workplaces where, you know, you're in the trenches together. Yeah. And, and those kind of experiences I didn't have. Maybe because I, growing up I moved so much that every girl best friend I had we eventually lost touch with. I eventually, you know, never heard from them again. Yeah. And with boys you could get it so like – we have a physical past. We have an emotional history. You know, you will keep writing to me <laughs> where I didn't know how to maintain that with a female. Wow. I'm and better at it now, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you the benefit of the doubt. Thanks. <laughs> no, I believe you. I mean, I thought it was so interesting too. Um, I've never heard anyone like put into words before you said in the book. Um, men talk about tangible things like sports, movies, TV, and women talk about like things you can't touch, like feelings and emotions and like thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense. Well, certainly back then. Well, it is. It is. You. I mean, you still. I still have guy friends where we. Of, have of course, those, but it's not your everyday conversation uh, usually. But like to grossly general generalize, which right. I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you can do that with with the high school because you are kind of figuring yeah. out what you will and won't talk about and what gets someone interested. And it's you know you can talk music, sports, your guitar, your skateboard, classes, <laughs> teachers, friends. But with girls, you know, it, it gets more into fantasy a little bit. Right, it seems yeah. So tell me, you started your blog in the 90s? Yeah, that was, that was that. early, right? You say that. The like, 90s, like the 90 90s. years ago. Not the 1890s. Have people heard of the 90s? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it predates the word blog. They used oh, to be called really? like online journals or web wow. diaries. Yeah. And it's still around. You're still like updating. Yeah, not often enough because as I've gotten older, um, I have jobs I can't really talk about and I have a family I don't really write about because the internet can be 
creepy yeah. sometimes and uh which is unfortunate because I really enjoyed writing Pammy.com, but I that was before I was, you know, writing books and scripts and things. So now I'm too busy writing to have time writing yeah. to write. Yeah, unfortunately, but and it's it, still there. Yeah, I was reading some stuff. Was, uh, again, yeah. a lot of content. <laughs> a lot of content. <laughs> because I, I'm reading all this, like, nonfiction, and then I'm looking at your, like, list of books. I'm like, wait, why are these novels? Mm-hmm. I just, like, assumed. <laughs> yeah, well, the first one was actually sort of fictionalized version of pammy.com because oh, really? at the time people didn't know what a you know blog didn't exist and even online dating was kind of odd yeah. so the thought of a book about uh, a book of comedic essays that is a best of a website people were like i don't what would i how would you even market this oh really so uh so yeah they said novelize it which one's that called why girls are weird Oh, that, oh, weird. Yeah. Okay. Weird. Weird. No. <laughs> it's very weird. But yeah, oh, so it's about a girl who fakes her identity online and gets very popular and she falls in love with one of her fans who thinks she's this other person that she's pretending to be. Oh, how all things have like, changed. All, exactly. Like compilations exactly. are like everywhere now. Right. It's like. Oh my God, I can't read another one. Also, cat, just one I'll also catfish, right? Like it's catfish <laughs> <laughs> around. Yeah, the 90s is a romance. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> now it's a lawsuit. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, so read it back when it was considered very Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks. <laughs> Perfect. I'll <laughs> imagine love them. this way. Yes. Um, and I know you like have done many careers. You were a theater major, and but you were always writing. Did you want to be a writer? Or was that never like correlated? Well, I guess I thought of it as uh, something I could do to get good grades or to make money while I was trying to act and oh, okay. didn't really start to see that I was paving the way for myself to perform yeah. right away. You know, you think, no, I have to do this kind of play or this kind of comedy or, you know, that yeah. kind of movie. So I'm a classical actor. Oh, well, <laughs> no, I think I always assumed I was better suited for comedy. But it I was, believe you. It was de- <laughs> but it was definitely easier to write comedy to get performed um, oftentimes for men. So when I, you know, when I started being in a comedy troupe, you know, the more that I wrote sketches for, you know, a mostly male comedy yeah. troupe, that was when my stuff was getting on stage. Oh, interesting. And then, you know, you, you then you learn your voice a little bit more. One of the lovely side effects of being this prolific is you're able to figure out where you're funny and what your point of view is and your take on things. So then I was a lot more confident writing material for myself and uh, female friends. That's when I did a parody of uh, Anne Heche's autobiography. Well, I did a parody of the vagina monologues using Anne Heche's autobiography. The Call Me Crazy? Yes. All right, I read that last year. <laughs> oh, you read Call Me Crazy yeah. last year? Isn't it amazing? It's crazy. It's <laughs> wonderful. I was like, this actually, this can't be real. Mm. I was, can you imagine today, like the paparazzi, when that happened? I wonder if today it would be no big deal now. Oh, really? Right, because it was just a sort of topless drug wandering of in fresno drug wandering yeah. drug wandering and then she said i'm fine now <laughs> and we said okay and we said okay here's let's a book make, about it yeah, i'm fine let's now maybe make a tv show like loosely based on it right nobody even brought it up i know that tv show came out uh, yeah nobody said a word nobody i was really... watching the tv show being like friends why aren't you why aren't you freaking out like this is right. this is real this, this is a documentary she thought her name was celestia and yeah. she was sent here to teach the world about love she spoke in tongues. Right. She claimed to have stigmata. <laughs> All in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Lock her up for good. It's a wonderful book. No, they locked her up and she went, I'm better now. I'm better now. I'm not I'm- a lesbian. <laughs> I figured it out. I'm not a lesbian. Right. So she dumped Steve Martin for Ellen DeGeneres. Mm-hmm. Same person. We're, we're not. That's not gossip. That's in her book. <laughs> right. Every page oh, of the no, book starts true. with, I was making this movie with this person. Harrison Ford called me this moment. Yes. <laughs> yes. We remember a lot of it. Well, I remember a lot of it because I used to perform it. She said oh. of Steve Martin, he Wait. was sunny and bright, like a light bright. He was mellow like yellow. He might have even been wearing yellow. And I love yellow. Not making any of that up. That's terrifying. It's. Wait, a, so you, you know what's terrifying is that it all still lives in my head. <laughs> So who's laughing now, Anne Hayes? How many hours do we have for this? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you yeah. didn't adapt it. You just copy pasted and said, read this. N- no. Well, oh, well, uh. lawsuits would say we, <laughs> well, I, there were interstitials, there were um, vignettes, and it was uh, it was 15 women performing from the book. You did have the book. But I mean, like the first, or my first uh, actress recited the table of contents, you know, as a, as a spoken <laughs> word. So... It was, and it wasn't really, the attempt wasn't to make fun of Anne Heche, but I felt like at the end of this book where she's 
being institutionalized and realizing I've made some weird choices and how do I talk my talk my way out of this? Yeah. That it really was about the extremes that celebrities are pushed to that you can get into this place where you are in a bra in Fresno getting your feet washed by a Mexican woman, <laughs> not making any of this up. Right. And uh and go, Oh, I guess I'll have to write a memoir. <laughs> <laughs> renounce the process it. renounce being a lesbian and th- go on barbara walters and then i can you know continue my life which she has she she had to make a statement saying i guess she jk did. jk i mean that's what happens now too right except you know tmz decides yeah when you're free to leave <laughs> you Man. barbara walters i think was a kinder judge and oprah right they were very forgiving <laughs> yeah judges they assumed the best. Yeah, now we don't do that to people. Maybe. So you're right. Maybe it would have been harder for her. But I also think it would just be more of a blip. Yeah. I remember also reading the book. I got it from like a used bookstore. And yes. I said, this sounds interesting. And I was reading it with friends being like, I have to, I have to read this to you. Yeah. Like she was doing LSD f- right. prescribed by a doctor. Yeah. And she thought she was this. Right. It was like a pile of shit. Was that? Remember that she about? was. Yes. Okay. Can we say it? Because I also know this part. <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Uh... Okay, so she, yes, so she took some LSD and then she remembered that, uh, well, she started to realize that she felt like shit, but then she realized I was shit. Shit was in me, up me. I was shitting shit and I was the shit I was shitting. There's more, but that's enough, right? It's poetry. It's a lot of, it is poetry. Was that Shakespeare At times it's po- you said? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Sam, hey. Oh, sorry. Hey, uh, page I get 41. I confused always. You uh, know page numbers. Well, I, well, no, I'm making that okay, up. But I, would, I, I know about where in the book it is. That was, you in fact, find it fast. in fact, that uh, that shit speech yeah. is the inspiration of the book because I was reading or the the play because I was reading it and thought I have to call my friend Anna because this is the monologue she needs to read when she auditions for things because I could hear her voice and each chapter oh. I heard another girlfriend of mine's voice and you know normally in comedy it's a lot of guys and then if they need a girl the guy would wear drag yeah so I was like I'm gonna make a show that's just ladies and. Is, uh, I brought a bunch of girls in and I gave them each a different part that I thought sounded like them in my head and they were like this is actually kind of funny and the great thing about doing the show is I had 15 women who never fought because each piece was catered specifically to their own weirdness oh. and it was sort of celebrating their own quirk yeah. through, through you know the, the girl who speaks in tongues and the girl who calls her mom at 2 in the morning to be like I remember being molested you know like every <laughs> Every story is so different, so crazy. Yeah. You know, she said I had herpes on my baby-sized pussy. I'm not making that phrase up. Right. You might have to bleep that part. But so, so I will bleep nothing. Every time, <laughs> hands off the button. Every time you would get, I can't believe I. Well, this book is amazing. You really should get it. And then I don't know. Maybe we'll put the show online. But I look for the black white picture of girl in pigtails on the cover. Oh, that's the uh, paperback version, which came oh. out soon after the book after the show. Because the yours? show hit the internet. Well, I had the original hardcover. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the show became this international scandal. It hit the uh, the wire because she showed up one day oh. and um, stood there during a standing ovation and then walked out. So, uh, oh. And it had been well-reviewed. And so then it was like Howard Stern talked about it. And it was in People Magazine and... It wow. was on page six. And so I saw, I <laughs> like Japanese n- n- in the Netherlands, like you everywhere they were. And this was, you know, early in the internet. So yeah. it really got picked up everywhere. And then the, the show became pretty popular. We actually shut it down mm, in lieu of any kind of. Okay. Thing, because we weren't making money off the show. Any proceeds we donated to a, a women's shelter. We were not, we were just trying to get representation and yeah. it was a great showcase of 15 women doing monologues um so and a know, clever marketable idea her husband at the time came to see it friends of hers came to see it <laughs> and um yes most people were i mean all but ann really seemed to enjoy the show <laughs> i just can't imagine being that upset if it's something you've like published and put in print that's true and she knew about the show we had told her we had invited her we had invited you know people that are in the book to, to come and see it and yeah. uh we could because we were when it got crazy it we were being we were just like i'm reading to you i'm not making yeah <laughs> i'm yeah, reading yeah. to you this is 
I don't <laughs> let's start with the title call, <laughs> call me, me crazy, crazy. <laughs> right she started with that and then and then because it was ultimately a pretty sympathetic look of at um you know where how how you can get so broken and lost from your your original true self because you're following yeah you know you have harrison ford and you know big things and then i don't know and then who are you know it was clear she was like who am i really who do i want to be and besides really good jesus. actresses besides jesus <laughs> and really good actresses you know embody other people all the time and then yeah having to go back to yourself might not always be fun interesting right that's amazing <laughs> And that's why I write more than I act. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you working on now? I'm uh, writing a feature at Disney Animation. Awesome. And uh, that takes up most of my time these days. But I have a graphic novel that should be coming out. I don't know. The It's it's still being um, drawn by the talented artist. So Oh, that's very cool. It depends on when she uh, gets everything done. But hopefully in the next year. Oh, fun. Yeah. Okay. And the Disney movie, very early stages. I'm not legally allowed to talk about it yet. Okay. <laughs> I hope to be able to talk about it in ever. the near future. <laughs> Disney likes you to use the words legally, not legally allowed. You sign a lot of forms. I try to use um, that like every day, at least once. You should yeah. at, at Starbucks. What's your, <laughs> what is your name? I'm not legally allowed to tell you. <laughs> you have yeah. to write the whole thing. You can call me crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to send you a copy of this show. I, oh it. my god, I would love to see it. <laughs> it's really a lot of fun. That's amazing. Okay, so how? Okay, we'll we'll go towards the end. How do you choose from your ideas, feature films, TV, books? How do you come up with a story and say it should be animated? It should be like a novel. Oh well, in terms of Disney, that they're director driven, so they hire a writer. They, oh, okay, they, I, this is not my. That, idea. That was not an I'm, issue, I'm, right? That's they have their people that are totally. <laughs> very trained in making those movies. Um, but in in terms of a book or a screenplay, um, sometimes it's uh, the I was about to say length, but that's not exactly what I mean. If your characters are in a situation where you want um, you know a hundred stories from them, that's a TV show. But okay. if you have some people that you know, this terrible thing is going to happen and this is what's going to happen at the end of it and everybody will be fine, that's probably a movie. Okay. That's what makes TV so much harder is you have to, well, how can you do that 100 times or 200 times or 300 times? That's, that's you know, all about characters in a situation that will keep creating new uh, stories. Oh, interesting. So each story just speaks to one format better. I think so. It's not so. even like an issue, really. Yeah, well, no, I've certainly started writing a book where halfway through I realized this was, I didn't have 320 pages of this story. Okay. Or it became, or or I had more than that. There was one where I started a book and then I realized it would be funnier as a half hour that the concept of what, what had happened to her, I could I could take for a long, long time and explore different themes of, of you know, what this girl was going through. Yeah. And then sometimes I had a screenplay where I realized I want to dig deeper into this situation, but th thematically, and I don't really, you know, someone's going to die at the end. So that's, you know, someone's going to die at the end. <laughs> it's like life. It may, right. Like life, it may just be two hours long. <laughs> so then you write, then you write your screenplay. <laughs> uh, I guess so. But sometimes you just know, you hear them, you hear them talking and, and when you hear them talking, you know if it sounds better in, in a, intimately in a book or if this is a larger than life thing that is, you know, film. And then ultimately, you, you kind of hope for a little of both, right? That you write a book that then becomes yeah. something else. Yeah. Amazing. And that all just starts with making sure you have good characters. Okay. Yeah. Um, last question, very quickly. Can you do a palm reading for me? <laughs> <laughs> I did brag about it in the book. You I? bragged about it. Tell me one thing I can okay, look forward one thing, to. One thing. Left hand, is that okay? Sure. I don't know. Uh, this little, these little lines right here between this line and this line, I can't quite see in this light, but see how I have two of them? Yeah. That means I'm supposed to have two kids. I don't see any lines. I know, I don't see any. Oh, That's why I man. wanted you to look. <laughs> is that just to double check? Okay, is I'm that... adopting. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Maybe, yeah, you know what? Maybe it's labor and then you don't have to worry. You might have 12. You never know. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. And then this line right here. My mom's going to be so upset. This line right here, if it curves into like your job. I don't know. This one's supposed to be like whether or not you're happy in your career. Am I? I think so. I'm going to say yes. Oh, perfect. <laughs> 
All right, this was so much fun. This was a lot of fun. We went into subjects. I was not expecting. It was great. Thank you. Please don't sue me. Oh, come on. So tell everybody, where can they find you on like social media, online and everything? I'm at Twitter at Pamela Ribbon. I'm online at pammy.com, P-A-M-I-E, although I don't write there very often. Uh, My books are wherever fine books are sold. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm not on Instagram. It's okay. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> You're a mom now. You're busy. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. Yes. Disney keeps me busy. And you can't legally show anything you do all day long. So. Oh, my God. All right. We'll cut it off. We'll cut it off. All right. And I'm on Twitter at Jeff Masters one We are on Twitter at Book Circle On. And we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. From managing editor Jason Squamata, executive producers Maria Menounos, Phil Svitek, and Kevin Undergaro, We would like to thank you for tuning in to Book Circle Online. For more discussion, go to bookcircleonline.com. And if you have comments, questions, or book title suggestions, write us at info at bookcircleonline.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this is Book Circle Online. BCO, join the circle. feelings and they were honest feelings and maybe he didn't know how to write back sometimes I feel weird when you're around too right but um but how special you must feel to get a 35 page letter about yeah (laughs) about what if you and I went on a picnic (laughs) (laughs) I remember a friend got one in college and she was like it's three pages and I was like oh my god three pages like mind blown yeah but you um, are kept in touch with a couple of these guys and asked them like what they thought. Mm-hmm. And they had said that they didn't ever think about trying to define the relationship. Right. Did that surprise you at all? I guess maybe I, because I was constantly trying to define it on the page right. for them. <laughs> but also, I think there was a feeling in all of them, which is we're we're friends here. And if we move this into something else, what if we're not friends anymore? And we were, you know, we were all all of them were true friendships of course i mean not not the ones where i'm like boy whose name i don't actually know but but the few that strong relationships that i talk and i talk about throughout the book i see you know on the other side it would have made things weird and some of them they did become boyfriends and we had really good relationships that ran their course but do you think that's like the main difference in how you experience like early sexuality versus the way these boys did it's just like trying to define it um well, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I try not to think about what they thought about when they thought about that. Um, hmm. I don't know. I think I probably was exposed to a lot of grown-up things pretty young. Right? Okay. We had we had cable from like day one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so I had seen I seen you know adult behavior from you know a pre ten year old set. That yeah. I, I think probably and we were in a small town and I wasn't from that small town so I think. Sometimes I was definitely pushing for or mm, talking about a relationship that they were not even starting to think of yet. Right. And not that I was trying to have sex with any of these boys, really, <laughs> despite what some of their moms may have thought. <laughs> <laughs> I was too scared. Right. I was too scared of that. I really just wanted all the I wanted all the passion. Yeah. But I think that um, now, now in this. Uh, Eleanor and Park sort of <laughs> life that we live in. Yeah. It seems like teenagers now are like, yes, give me all the passion. But let me tell you, in the 90s, that was not happening. Right. No, boys were aloof. You saw Footloose. If they had passion, <laughs> it was in dance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. <laughs> yeah. And almost seemed to that it was like letter, a collection of letters from like nine different girls of all like ages and like varying maturity levels. Mm-hmm. It just like this like major span. Yeah. That's what's interesting is you can watch me learn from my own mistakes as the letters go on. And sometimes I'm being a little more coy. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, boys like when you talk about boobs. <laughs> 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 boys like it when you curse. And so they, I moved into different levels. You could tell when I was a little a a new approach with a boy like this guy likes it aloof right so then that's the one where i'm like i don't even want men (laughs) men but i don't even want to be in a relationship anymore i want to be in a relationship with you you know it's like all it's all in there you can see me testing out all these relationships that i didn't quite have a both sides of yeah that's very intuitive though i guess i (laughs) you have to i mean some people dated a lot in high school. I dated a lot in my head in high school and on the page. 
It's okay. I guess it's less. You can't get pregnant that way. <laughs> You know, you're married now. It's a happy ending. Right. Kids, don't feel bad. Right. No, it all works out eventually. Right. The, I'm 87 uh, years old. But you look great for 87. I really do. I really do. It's because I never went outside. Oh, perfect. It's the best, best wig I've seen all day. Thanks. Absolutely. The little Pam writing letters was like very passionate and intense. Mm -hmm. You said you were shy though. So did that not cross over into the, your like real life? I was pretty shy until uh, I got into theater around 10th. 10th grade 11th grade something like that okay I was pretty shy before then uh so yes yeah, so there were boys that just probably they just had no no idea no no they couldn't because yeah. I would not have said it to them so <laughs> like there's the story about the boy who touched me really high on a thigh so I had to go home and write a poem about him right because <laughs> it was raining and we were on a bus uh he did not know when I, I said nothing to him on the bus he put his hand up my skirt and then I went home and wrote about it. He <laughs> never heard a word. Or thought about it again, probably. No, he probably didn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you finally realize, we're talking earlier about that this wasn't like the norm? Like, was um, that a big revelation when you figured that out? Well, we, you know, you would write notes to girls too. Girls wrote notes to each other all the time. Oh, and really? you, I guess, you know, you every once in a while would get a note back from a boy, but it was usually like, hey, I, I have soccer practice after school. My mom's making dinner. <laughs> right back soon, okay? Right? <laughs> it's just very factual. Right. And uh, so I guess I just thought I was, maybe I thought I was good at it. Okay. Right? Because why else would I keep doing it? There had to have been some encouragement either. Well, maybe because they read them or maybe because they would say thanks for the note or something or I don't know. You'd think you would stop. If there wasn't something coming back. Yeah. So maybe and not these... to like put past judgment. It was kind of like amazing that like little Pam kept doing this. <laughs> <laughs> she was very persistent. Well, I didn't have anything else going on. <laughs> For one. You moved a lot. It's okay. I, I moved a lot. And then once I was in theater, I was very busy. I had rehearsal. But before then, uh, I had this time to write. I guess I thought writing, I didn't really want to write poems to myself. And I finished all my homework and I'd read all the books I was, you know, I, I don't know. I had yeah. some free time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There was, I, I mean, there's a lot of content too. Yes. Was there a lot to like sift through? Yes. And that's not all of it in the book by, in any means. <laughs> there's just so many. There are some that are just not appropriate. And in fact, now that the book is out, some of these boys have contacted me with oh, letters really? that I never kept a first copy of. Oh, that they saved. It's way more. Yes. I that's mean, amazing. That is what I learned is some of them, they really did save. Both 200 page letters were saved. Wow. But I couldn't have known that at the time. You know, they didn't tell me that. And, no. But, but... Um, and the friend that sent you the 200-page letter, was that just, like, fortuitous to, like, the book? No, I, I, had, I had started writing the book and jokingly was like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> remember that 200-page letter? He said, of course I have it still, you know. It's at my mom's house. Wow. So... Yeah, maybe even when I thought I was a, making a fool of myself, and I certainly was. I don't want to <laughs> negate it in any way. It, it's nice to know that on the other side, it meant something Absolutely. to them, even if they couldn't really process what it was at the time. It made them feel special. Yeah, and yeah. a keep after all that time. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, I have them all. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, yeah, I mean, they were real... I, I, I do joke and say some of these people didn't know me, but there were a few that were real relationships. They were real boyfriends, even if yeah. it wasn't super consummated or whatever, but they were first loves and they were first feelings. From the library of Maria Menounos, this is Book Circle Online, featuring in-depth discussion, insight, news, and commentary on all the world's leading book titles and their authors. And now... Book Circle Online. Hey everybody, it's Book Circle Online. I'm your host, Jeffrey Masters, and joining us today is Pamela Ribbon. Pamela's new book, Notes to Boys, re-examines her childhood through the many notes and letters she wrote as a teenager, and she's here today to talk with us. Hi. Hi, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, the book was fun. Thank it was you. wild. 
Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you said childhood at first. And I was like, that's a little misleading because I'm much older than. <laughs> it's not. I'm not very small in the book. Uh, flash. <laughs> yeah, it's not appropriate for the under twelve. What was it like? 13, 14, 15? Yeah, I think the first story starts at thirteen and goes to okay. right around my freshman year of college. Okay, I consider that childhood. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely a coming of age. Right. Yes. Um, now, before we start, I just want to let everyone know at home that the letters you're writing it was not like a one-time thing. Right. This was like a massive recurring part of your life yeah one was 200 pages <laughs> more than one <laughs> should I look less shocked <laughs> no well I didn't realize how shocking it was until other people would you, so you're oh, doing really? it like you're doing the head tilt and the polite nod you know as if I was practicing that in the mirror <laughs> I bet. I've learned that people are, so 200 pages to one person who was 14 and did not understand yeah <laughs> yeah why you would do something like that I thought, um, I, I, I read a lot, and I thought the way to a boy's heart was through, you know, words straight from my soul. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what sparked the idea, though, to like, how did you come up with this, like, idea to start writing the letters? Do you remember, like, what the, like, spark was? Well, I, um, well, I moved a lot as a kid, and so my mom always told me to write my, write stories to, you know, keep myself entertained. Yeah. So I used to write short stories when I was little. And then, I don't know, I guess keeping it all to myself just didn't seem right. <laughs> like, I have to share with the audience. You know, there wasn't, there were no blogs. There was no way, right. to, I couldn't tumble my way to <laughs> uh, some boy's heart. So, yeah, I wrote to these boys. I, I really liked romantic comedies and felt like I could, my life was going to be a John Hughes movie as soon as I wrote myself into it. Right. right. <laughs> And I loved you loved the Albert Brooks movie, and you mm -hmm. thought you were going to be Albert Brooks. Right, I'm I'm Albert Brooks, and I this boy I loved was the Holly Hunter of right. of my broadcast news life. <laughs> we'll talk about gender identity issues later. This is literally <laughs> the closest I've ever been to being in broadcast news right now. Okay, well, perfect. <laughs> Welcome. Here it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I thought one of the also the wild parts of the book was that you weren't just writing the letters; you were like giving them to people. Right. What were some of their responses? Silence was common. No response. No response happened a lot. Well, I mean, only now can I think what. So we didn't say. So I, I have all the first drafts of these letters that I kept as if, I guess, a diary of my love. Right. You know, how, that's how that's how writers do it. Right. <laughs> so how will they publish after I die? This is what I did. I beat it before I died. I published them now. I see now why people wait until after they're dead to publish oh, their no. love letters. But no, so I thought, I thought, um, yeah, I thought I would give these boys these letters and that they would see how much they meant to me. I was pretty shy to say these kinds of things in person, and I also really liked shyish boys. So we weren't going to have this kind of conversation. Oh, I see. These were grown-up feelings I was having. They were. Right. Yeah. Too grown-up for 14-year-old boys. Yeah. And really too grown-up. For me, I when you read the book, you will know I clearly don't understand how sex works, and I, <laughs> I don't understand uh, boundaries and things that yeah. that come with adult relationships. It was almost like you were like reading Shakespeare in school, being like, "Oh, that's how a writer is supposed to write." Mm -hmm. Well, I will do that then. Yes, yeah. oh, I wish that they were <laughs> Shakespearean. They're um, really, they're really. You can tell that Stephen King was an influence in my life. <laughs> you can pick out lots of influences. Paula Danziger, Judy Bloom. <laughs> Somewhere between, uh, somewhere between an adult Judy Bloom and endless love, right? Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been on the back. <laughs> That's right. For those of you who felt endless love wasn't intense enough, right? <laughs> Which little Pam clearly did not. Yeah, no, little Pam needed all, all of her heart out there. I guess I felt like if I didn't tell the whole thing, and obviously it's it's heightened. I'm imagining these relationships that we're not quite in. Some of these boys sometimes never really spoke to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or I had to class with them, which yeah. is not the same thing. That we did not hold hands, but I was picturing a future, and not really. You know, I also know I'm 15, but right. so this is my elaborate way of saying, why don't we go see a movie together?